Everybody, welcome into Fill My Heart. My name's Drew Absher. I'm Parker Newman. And this is weird. We're doing the regular podcast from my house. Yep. Um, this is the first time we've ever done this. Uh, we burned down Stab Comedy Theater. We did. Set it on fire. Yep. We're Antifa. We <laughs> we thought that we would get the insurance money. Yeah. Um, I don't know how insurance works. Turns out Jesse got all of the insurance money. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> we have we have a really special episode for you guys. We got um a very funny comedian out of L. A. on the podcast named Keith Carey. Yeah. Um, that coincides with news. I guess we'll probably break it next time we're at Stab, mm-hmm. and uh, we're going to be going down to one week a month at Stab on the live stream. So if you enjoy the live stream, um. Sorry, but, uh, you know, Jesse's pretty overworked at stab. So yeah. we want to give him a break as much as possible. And totally. uh, we have the capabilities to do it by ourselves now. So um, that's what's going on there. Um, we just wrapped up with Keith Carey. You guys will hear that yeah. in a Very minute funny. here. We, d- we got a little interview. Got we watched an episode with him. Really funny shit. Um, yeah. It's cool because I'm like legitimately like a fan. Yeah, man. Of He's, him. And I remember when we saw we saw Keith at punchline yeah maybe what a year and a half ago yeah something like that and dude i've never that guy like works on stage more than i've seen anybody yeah he's fucking yeah one thousand percent dude that guy works like he's up there like sweating yeah he has like cat williams sweat dripping (laughs) down yeah he's like a pentecostal fucking pastor (laughs) up there yeah like a dab he's like well boy let me tell you something boy (laughs) i got some shit to say about that um yeah Yeah. but really really fun episode um we're doing this right now because we have an ad read and then a uh a voicemail yeah um Um, let's get into the voicemail because i think it's going to spur some conversation here um let's check it out hi boys this is tiffany i am a longtime listener and a longtime vegan hell yeah tiffany um i was just curious if you ever thought that maybe the vegan food that you're trying is maybe just not imaginative enough or maybe you're just not creative enough to come up with food that is actually delicious and satisfying uh tiffany i hope you didn't mean that condescending because n- neither me and parker are going to say we're good at cooking yeah vegan food. I, <laughs> no. I, I, i'm you're 100 percent right I, I have a theory on this but i'll let you finish here i'm a long time vegan who's fat as fuck and i absolutely love everything i eat and i share it all on my instagram pages and i inspire people to go vegan every day i sincerely hope both of you accept my challenge to go vegan for a week and I'd love to see what creations you come up with. Thanks so much, and I can't wait to hear what you have to say next week. Okay, so we got challenged to go vegan for a week. Yeah. I'll accept that challenge. I don't know if I can do it right now. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I don't know. I'm, I am I literally just went grocery shopping. Yeah, that's, what, that's exactly why I'm like, I don't think I could afford to go vegan this week, but I think... After like a week and a half, I could definitely try that. Yeah, totally. People people are like, oh, being vegan isn't expensive at all. Just vegetables are cheap. It's like, no, but if you want to eat uh, stuff that, you know, isn't on a cow's diet. Like, yeah, you know, right, you exactly. Like human food. And Tiffany, good. to your question, I think that I actually had this conversation with someone at work today is that like, it's not that vegan food is bad. Yeah. It's just that it's only good for vegans. Yeah, 100%. Like people who don't eat vegan food like okay my sister is uh, it's kind of like uh how you know having sex with like a disease riddled prostitute is great to someone who yes. is willing to have sex with a disease riddled prostitute yeah if, if that's all you can get yes for sure. my sister is non-dairy uh and gluten-free yeah she's got celiac disease sorry i don't know if that's a hipaa violation but um, <laughs> that's what she's dealing with. And, uh, they just opened up here in Sac. I don't know where Tiffany, I think Tiffany's out of town, but yeah, here in, not. here in Sacramento. Yeah. They just opened up a vegan donut shop oh, in that's Midtown. Cool. And my sister went down there yesterday and bought one of every single donut flavor they offer really? and brought them home. And I tried them and it's like, like they had an apple fritter that tastes just like an apple fritter. Yeah. Like I would totally eat that apple fritter, but then she's like, try this mate, this maple pecan one. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it tastes good. 
good. Yeah. I would just much rather have a maple donut. No, 100%. That's the, that's the thing. And I think that I don't remember exactly what we were saying. We were probably just busting chops last week or whatever. But I felt like that's what we were kind of saying is like vegan food is really good if it's all you can eat. Yeah, true. But it's not like disgusting food. Yeah. Well, it, it just kind of like the technology isn't there yet. You know, yeah, totally. so it's kind of like, like, uh, I've seen just like Facebook posts or whatever on social media pictures of like uh fast food vegan burgers, but that's like high end v like that that's like expensive shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. And it's like that's just a normal fucking meal if you're a meat eater. Yeah, absolutely. And but that's like super hard to make and like all Yeah. That. I think that I think we could take that challenge. We'll figure it out. Yeah. I think we're I don't know when we're going to drop this episode because we already have one in the can from last week. Right. And then we just re- we're oh, recording we do? this one. Yeah, from Stab. We have the part two of that episode. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we could drop them both in one week. I really don't give a shit. Oh, yeah. it's. I feel like it's Monday. That's why. We should. Maybe we'll put the Keith Carey one up on Patreon first. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then we'll drop it on the regular yeah, platform. That makes sense. Sometime in the week. Um. Anyway. Also, you're but not what, fat. Yeah, Tiffany, you're not, not fat. Don't say, <laughs> don't say you're fat as fuck. Yeah. I mean, maybe nice for maybe a little romance, <laughs> maybe for a vegan, but that's not saying much. Maybe whenever <laughs> I whenever I do uh, uh, like matchmaker, I always just do a Jeff Goldblum impression. All right. Oh, maybe just smell some chemistry here. Maybe a little bit of chemistry. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there's some uh, some sexual tension in the room. Yeah. Um, I love choking girls at concerts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I've been accused of some stuff. Yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah. Yes. But isn't the peculiar part about the human experience? So. Um, <laughs> Tiffany. Yeah. I'll, I'll accept well, that challenge. I went veg vegetarian. Yeah. For like two or three months, the only reason I stopped was Fourth of July, oh, and no, I like fell sense. off the wagon. But yeah. it was only for because I realized just like a lot of the shit I like to eat that's fattening, like a a fucking burrito or Chinese food or totally. whatever, they all have meat. So yeah. I'm like, if I don't let myself eat meat, I won't be able to eat this stuff. Right. I I mostly I think uh when last week I was saying if you're not big into like meat anyway, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of, and I I. We actually messaged in stuff about this, uh, and I'll just repeat it here, is that just for me, like... Oh, Tiffany messaged you? Yeah. Okay. Someone who's, who's like, a hardcore food addict, you know? Uh, It's kind of like me eating meat for... Stop, like, not eating meat for me would be, like, someone who drinks, like, you know, 10 beers a day. Yeah. 10 to 15 beers a day, and then stopping. But being vegan to a lot of vegans, I feel like, is... Someone who has one beer a week and then they just stop drinking. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's not the same. Yeah, like totally. My friend Ralph, uh, I don't really talk to him anymore. Good guy. No, like falling out. Mm-hmm. We just you know stop talking. Um, but like he's vegan, and like he would just always eat just bread and hummus, and he's like, yeah, this is just what I always ate, and it's like, okay, then you don't get to like, yeah, you know? yeah, totally, yeah. I mean, that's how my ex was. That's how Miranda was. Where it was just like. She just ate cucumbers for dinner. Yeah, totally. And like, what she all she the only meat she ate was chicken and fish. Like, she never ate red meat. Right. She like she had never in her life had beef. Really? Yeah. Because she was like born. She wasn't in a gang. Spoiler, <laughs> no. I guess. <laughs> she was like by the time she could start eating solid food it was like right when Mad Cow was happening. Oh. And shit. so her parents were like, "Well, there's just no need to ever feed our kid." <laughs> red meat and so she she never had a hamburger in her entire life but anyway um that's besides the point i miss her so much um, <laughs> no <Anyway>. uh <laughs> tiffany thanks for calling in uh people continue to call in god damn it dude i just got to memorize this phone number it is something oh wait i think it's actually on here uh oops 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 uh yes 415-763-7445 that's 415 pod phil yeah um yeah all right, I think we just have to do an ad read now. Yeah, totally. Have, this is for our good buddy. Yeah. Right before uh, we get into Keith Carey on yeah, the podcast. That was so much fun. It's really cool just because we, uh, like, uh, I'm literally, I don't mean to suck him off too much, but John Ross told me that the best set he's ever seen at Stab was when Keith Carey did a set there. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all. The dude, like, is, like, you know, he's not, like, He's not a ginormous comedian. You know he what I mean? Be, <laughs> yeah, he's not I like mean, he is physically, yeah, physically <laughs> ginormous, but 
not like in stature, but I've never, I remember watching him at Punchline going like, this guy's a professional comedian. Totally. Like he's a total pro. Yeah. He's very funny. He's riffing and writing. So, you know, just YouTube him, YouTube him a lot. And then make sure, you know, you share our podcast with him. Like, like it's wildfire. Um, all right, let's uh let's read for our buddy Spencer Sellins, everybody. Tangents with Spencer Sellins is the new comedy podcast from comedian Spencer Sellins. You would hate to be the person who listened to the old comedy podcast from Spencer Sellins. You would look like a fucking moron. <laughs> uh, the podcast features other comedians and creators discussing any and every topic that comes to mind, uh, whether it's comedians considering ISIS, who... Through a clip that Spencer posted, I found out was our good friend David Sam. Yeah, that was really funny. David was considering joining ISIS, so <laughs> seems like- everyone go after him because I was very nervous. It was me who said that. <laughs> no, that could that's that's a moment for me where it's like that could be any of us. Yeah, I mean, I, it literally could be. Um, <laughs> did you get a hair in your mouth? Yeah, though? it's weird. It's because the your beard is pulling them out. Oh, or, yeah, they're getting oh, pulled out of your mustache. It sense. happens to me all the time. Um, the podcast features other comedians and creators discussing any and every topic that comes to mind, whether it's comedians considering ISIS or Parker's love of Ben Shapiro's sister. No topic oh, yeah. is too obscure. Parker, how many loads have you spilled on the Sabbath to Ben Shapiro's sister? <laughs> on Shabbat, I, I only do it on Havdalah. Okay, um, I don't to, know what that means. It's the ending of the Sabbath, oh. Saturday night. Yeah. Oh, Saturday night, party yeah. time. <laughs> All right. It's, um. well, yeah, I, here's the thing is that there's some like things that I drag out to that are so hot that I feel like I don't want to overdo it because I'm scared. Yeah. That, you know, yeah, I'll absolutely. desensitize myself to it. Yeah, sure. I mean, that makes sense. You know, a woman who had her nude photos leaked is probably the person. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you, you never, you never want to spoil yourself out. You yeah. Know? Well, Palestinian blood has been leaked <laughs> and she doesn't feel sorry about that. So, <laughs> Um, Dude, have I, have I told you that I want to have Daniel Bercholi on and just ask her loaded political questions? That's a good idea, actually. We should I, see. I, she would cost so much money to get on here. Worth it. But, yeah. I mean, if we could but, raise the funds. But I just thought like a, just something like a, say like a, like, so uh, your newest, uh, your newest uh, single just came out as number nine on Billboard's Top 100 Artists. Uh, do you feel like Israel is an apartheid state? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. I like that, actually. Yeah. Uh, so, Danielle, you said to cash you outside. Uh, Two-part question. What does that mean, and do you think that the inmates at Guantanamo Bay were treated unfairly? Go ahead. <laughs> um, mention the episodes that Drew and Parker were on. Okay. Drew, episode 10. Big up the island, yeah. And Parker was on, oh, oh my goodness, my pee-pee's so small. And, uh-oh, someone put Wait, something in my butt. Okay, I, these are the names of the episodes. This, no. <laughs> these are the names of them. What do you want me to say? It says live from the echo chamber. Ah, oh, man, I misread it. Episode, <laughs> God damn it. And episode 12, Bumblebee Adrenaline. Yep. Okay, other tangent guests that have also been on Fill My Heart include Sam Hocalter, David Samuel, Josh Means, Parker's Little Pee-Pee, and more. <laughs> it would uh, be larger if it didn't curve to the left. <laughs> <laughs> It, it it doesn't go point A to point B, so it loses distance. No, it it, I have an Australian dick. It looks like a boomerang. Uh, call to action. Check out Tangents with Spencer Sellens on Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, if you get your podcasts on Apple Podcasts, leave a review mentioning that Fill My Heart sent you. Um, yeah. All right, guys. Without further ado, here's our interview with Keith Carey. Hey, everybody. Before we go, uh, after taping... Parker and I remembered we didn't put any of our plugs in there. So what fucking morons we are, but also what gracious hosts. Um, if you guys want more of Parker the Newman, I don't know why you would. Um, you can follow him on Twitter at Parker the Newman, on Instagram at Parker the Newman, add him on Facebook at Parker Newman. Um, make sure you follow the podcast pages at Fill My Heart Pod on all social media platforms. Like we said at the top, leave us a voicemail at that number we left. Um, also go, go subscribe to the subreddit. That's the big one right now is we're trying to push people to the subreddit. It's r slash fill my heart. Um, you can follow me on social media at drew Absher is dumb on Instagram at drew Absher on Twitter. Don't add me on Facebook. Waste of everyone's time. Um, Patreon, patreon.com slash fill my heart. Um, you know, the, the more, let's just say, 
let's just you, just between you, me, and the light pole. Let's just say the more patrons we get, um, I'll probably cut that part out. Okay, all right. Uh, thanks, guys. See you later. Bye. Hey, everybody. Uh, it's the it's Drew Absher, and I'm uh, Parker Newman. Today we have special guest uh, Keith Carey. Thank you so much for being on, hey. man. Uh, yeah, no problem, man. Thank you for uh, having me on whatever this is. Do we talk about Dr. Phil? Is yeah, that- <laughs> that's what we do. Yeah, uh, Dude, you're this such a trooper. This is the only time this has ever been said, but I'm, I'm doing your podcast because my girlfriend likes it. That's oh, really? 100%. <laughs> that's awesome. My girlfriend, I think, likes your podcast more than she's liked anything I <laughs> So, Well, thanks. Have her, tell her thanks for listening. That's, Dude, you're such a trooper. You're like, yeah, I'll do your podcast. What do we do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. uh, yeah. We, we, uh, we watch episodes of Dr. Phil and make fun of him. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's pretty stupid. For the most part. Yeah. I mean, uh, up top, we normally just like, you know, talk about stuff going on and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I, I've actually just started uh listening to this is now to show yeah it's a great it's uh, really funny yeah it's very oh, thanks man uh, yeah well what's really cool about it too is that like i'm hold con- on this is not a show is keith's podcast yeah we should totally say that. it is yeah i do it with uh with tom goss yeah uh if, if you ever listen to my old podcast mean boys and wished it was 30 percent less good uh, <laughs> now, now that exists we, we cut out the really fast funny ones so now it's just two fat guys breathing weird into a microphone <laughs> that's <laughs> Yeah, 100%. That was uh, up until I lost some weight. That was basically this podcast, too. <laughs> yeah. so. I was going to say, you look like, I don't want to say good because you still look like you, but like, you look, <laughs> you know, yeah. you look less fat, which is cool. Thank you. Yeah, I'm still, yeah. you can't uh, do so much cardio that you don't look Jewish, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to jog my nose down. <laughs> Parker lost 20 pounds and his love for money. It was yeah. really interesting, actually. <laughs> but yeah, I, I really do. It's uh, I, I've only caught up to like the first couple episodes, but it's really what what's I'm kind of jealous of honestly is that there's no like COVID rust for you guys. It seems. Yeah, well, I mean, part of it is that me and Tom live together. So, like, since uh, since minute one of quarantine, we've just been sitting around riffing and just talking all day anyway. Oh, so, okay. uh, you know, we have the luxury of we didn't have to do a, uh, you know, a Zoom thing and have to deal with, like, weird delays and shit. So we just kind of uh, I think we channel all our anxiety about everything going on into that. And it seems to be kind of fun. Yeah, man, I was I was listening to it today. Sorry, Parker, I don't know if I'm going to step on a question. I was listening no, to the most it. recent episode, and you guys brought up the Farrell's ice cream Sacramento airplane tragedy, which, <laughs> yes, I, dude, I was so fucking happy that you guys did that, because it's like, <laughs> even in Sacramento, it's like one of the least talked about lures. Dude, I had no idea, and I am, like, there's two things I love. It's plane crashes and ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> the Dude. fact that I was not made aware of this at any point, I was, like, pissed at people I know for not letting <laughs> Not know. letting you know yeah. about it. Do, here, yeah. Here's my question. Do you think it was an inside job from TGI Friday? <laughs> yeah. Jet fuel cannot melt hot fuck. <laughs> <Yeah>. so. <laughs> it's a good point. Dude, I was, right. I was laughing so hard because uh, so I don't know if you guys got to it in the Wikipedia article, even if it mentioned it, but like the last location for Farrell's, they tried to reboot it in Sacramento, Yeah, which is the dumbest thing. It's like rebuilding oh the God. Twin Towers. It's like, why would you fucking, it's just putting <laughs> a bigger with, target. Now with a hundred percent less airplanes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But dude, literally the, the only building that's ever successfully rebooted after getting hit by a plane was the world trade. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. That's the only one they got. Uh, I had a, girlfriend who like she i think she was like for her 19th birthday or whatever her dad was like we should go to Farrell's ice cream and everyone's like i don't know what this is and so he like took us there and we're like this is for like not e- not even children it's for infants it's like kids don't even yeah, this like is this. for the this is for people who have only been alive for six months and people who will be dead yeah, six exactly months. dude yeah. it's like the most obnoxious looking place and then her fucking dad was like such a shithead. I don't know what his intention was, but he asked the waitress about the plane crash. Right. And she's, yeah, it's just some like fucking 16 year old. And then she's like, uh, we're not we're not supposed to really talk about that. Really? And I thought that was hilarious that they had instructed the waitstaff. Like, if you get some dumb white guy in here who thinks right. he's going to get you in a gotcha moment talking about a plane crash, yeah. do not. Like, she went the like, the official Pharrell statement is we do not have access to <laughs> yeah. the black box recording. <laughs> 
We don't know what we did to that man to yeah. lead him to crash I, his plane here. I just imagine. You know, if Mark Wahlberg would have taken his kids to Pharaoh for their birthday, <laughs> it would have been totally different. That's a good okay? point, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's great. I just imagine that guy being like, sorry, not the plane crash, the hologram. How was that? Hologram? <laughs> yeah, the hologram. <laughs> I love the idea of somebody listening to this who has no idea what the fuck we're talking about. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, anyone who doesn't should Google it immediately. Basically, a plane just crashed into an ice cream parlor. <laughs> which has to be the and worst. And it's not the only time a plane crashed <laughs> yeah. into that ice cream. That, that's part. what when you guys so looked up. Yeah, there was like another Ferrells that got hit by another plane. And holy, was shit. it in Torrance? I think so. Yeah, it yeah. was like in the South Bay. And then there's another one that somebody drove a car through. Yeah, it's uh, Ferrells was fucking doomed, dude. In, in in the the pilot's defenses, that place is like all flashy lights. I could see why you'd get distracted by it and maybe lose control of some of the gauges and yeah. then just fucking right. <laughs> you thought it was a landing strip. Yeah, and you too close. <laughs> it, the only way it could have been a better news story is if it was Harrison Ford who did it. Because Harrison Ford has crashed like eight planes now. Really? Yeah, you didn't know How about do this. I not know? Yeah, dude, Harrison Ford, I think, has gotten into three self piloting plane crashes. Man, and yeah, so, he wrecked like, a plane on a golf course in like yeah. Malibu or but, something. Yeah, it was like his fucking, third he was one. fine. He like walked yeah. away. He was really? just like got out of the cockpit. Yeah, God yeah. Damn. Nothing can kill that guy. He's like, look, I drove the Millennium Falcon. I got yeah. this. <laughs> He's like, look, I right. did Indiana Jones 4. Okay, if that, did, <laughs> if that didn't wreck me, then I don't know what. I will. shared a trailer with Shia LaBeouf. Okay, hi, well, he, you know, in case the plane goes down, he has a refrigerator he climbs into inside of the plane. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, um, so how's, I mean, I hate to fucking turn it into like dumb conversation, but how have you been doing with COVID? How's that? Because you're in LA. <clears throat> yeah, it's fucking, uh, it sucks here, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a bummer. I mean, it's like, you know, the, the everything burning down has been kind of a welcome distraction from everything else. <laughs> yeah. That, we're That's kind of feeling fun. that up here as well. I mean, we're not. We've kind of, we've been, my girlfriend and I bought like just a six inch speaker and started doing open mics in the park, which has been kind of cool. Okay. I mean, we've gotten like, maybe like, you know, 50 to 70 max. So that's been, yeah. that's been all right. But other than that, dude, it's, it's been bad up here too. But yeah, you're right. Like the smoke is fucking what's causing issues yeah, now. Yeah, I, I think the smoke is probably more ferals that planes have crashed <laughs> yeah. into. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that explains why it smells a little bit like strawberry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like mostly burning human flesh, but a little bit of thud. Yeah. <laughs> have you been getting stage time down there at all? Or is it all oh, just... Oh shit, no. No, I've Jesus, done like, uh, I've done like two Zoom shows. Uh the zoom stand-up thing it's like i appreciate it i'll do it but it's uh i'm not very good at it yeah i don't i don't know if anyone can be yeah yeah because my whole thing is when i do stand-up the trick is if i just keep talking really fast nobody will notice i'm not actually clever uh (laughs) and when i when i have to like pause every 30 seconds to be like huh did the joke bomb or is the connection bad like yeah fucking sucks yeah um they're rough dude yeah i've just been kind of doing other stuff i've been focusing on the podcast it's been uh What's been really weird is that I live like right off Hollywood Boulevard, which is like the touristiest mm-hmm. like area. Mm-hmm. So it's like I'm walking outside and it's like the world is ending and I'm gauging how OK we are by how many like street performers are coming back to the block. Oh, dude, that's so funny. <laughs> that's great. Dude, I remember the first one I saw, there was just a Freddy Krueger hanging out when it was still illegal to leave your house or whatever. I'm like, who are you taking pictures with, dude? Dude, that's so oh, funny wow. to imagine them having the same dilemma as comedians where they're like look if i'm not if i'm not out there trying to scare kids i'm going to lose my mind i need to get (laughs) back on the corner i need to put on my what america needs right now is to heal (laughs) by meeting tweaker elmo yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah. that's fucking dude that's so funny that the street performers are slowly coming back like they're like the second i got hassled by a spider-man with a fanny pack i was like okay we're gonna be all right (laughs) yeah this country that was like the first time you laughed after 9-11 it's like all right there's still hope for this world that's your nature's healing moment you're like everything's back to normal yeah Uh, did and you also like you used to work at disneyland right did you have to like dress up like when i worked at disneyland yeah like were you in a suit or yeah i I mean i wasn't like a character i was too fat for that but uh i was they have like weirdly like restricted. You have to be like five three and anorexic to be. Mickey <laughs> Mouse. Uh, wow. it, it's fucked. It's all everybody who's like plays Mickey Mouse is like a fifty year old Filipino woman with a smoking habit. That's like, awesome. They're all just these tiny used to be gymnasts escaped their country on a raft. Like uh, real hard ass <laughs> women. I love them. They're like some of the best people I've ever met. 
But um, fucking uh, no, I had to wear like I had to wear a lot like what the uh, the Ferrells people wear, where it was like a bow tie and Ugh. like a little like rainbowy vest. <clears throat> Oh yeah, uh, were, were yeah. You, which is not a good look when you have to walk home from Disneyland, like when because I lived like down the street, so I had to walk through just like a bad part of Anaheim, yeah. dressed like a fucking uh, <laughs> a Macy's parade float for slave owners. Yeah, you, like, <laughs> you were dressed like someone who wants to get jumped. <laughs> Dude, I got mugged one time Did wearing really? a bow tie. Holy it shit! It's the worst shit ever. Yeah, and I was so broke because Disney pays nothing. Yeah, they literally gave me my wallet back. <laughs> Holy, Holy fuck! That's crazy. Yeah, they took my wa- they took my wallet and they were just like, "Ah, oh, there's nothing here. Give us your phone." And then they gave me the wallet. Man. That's crazy. That's that. It's yeah. I feel kind of bad for him though because he's like, "Oh shit, this guy's a bow tie. He must be rich." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god, it's a it's a Rockefeller. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, no, I'll tell you the most embarrassing thing about it wasn't even the bow tie. It's that this is when I was like 19 and stupid. And I had the wallet I had was the bad motherfucker wallet from Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and there is no less bad motherfucker moment than getting robbed in a Disneyland <laughs> yeah. uniform. Handing another man your fucking wallet that says bad Not motherfucker. Not even a man. These were children. I was robbed <laughs> by like 14 year olds. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's uh, rough. Yeah. That's uh, amazing. Yeah. I, um, yeah. Well, Keith, uh, do you mind if we jump into some clips? Dude, let's do it. Cool. Uh, we'd like to ask our guests, what's like your familiar familiarity level with Dr. Phil? I I don't really like I I never got super into Dr. Phil. I just feel like every time I see him pop up in the news, it's because he's trying desperately to get people to like like he really yeah. wants to be friends with famous people the way Oprah is. <laughs> yeah. Like he tried to really insert himself into like the Nick Jonas, Sophie Turner thing and or Joe, whichever Jonas. Sure. And they weren't really having it. It seems like that's his whole deal. He's just trying to be the hanger on to famous people. Yeah. Well, he's kind of we've talked about it probably ad nauseum for the people who listen to this. But like he's in a weird spot after the Cash Me Outside girl where it's like right. his producers were like, look at how much traction we're getting when we go viral. So now they're just like, yeah. they're doing anything to go viral, which sucks right. because like before that, it was actually like a pretty decent daytime TV show. You know what I mean? Like where it was like actually yeah. enjoyable. Oh man, I met, I met that girl, by the way. I worked on a show that she was on. Oh, really? fuck. Because Connor oh. McSpadden commented on Parker's yeah. post about it. And he said to we, like, we were on the same show. She's going to die. Really? Like, really? Dude, she, it's such a bummer, man. It's like uh, it's some real evil shit happening around her. Oh, Jesus. Really? Can you can you elaborate or it just everything has the like everything you fear is happening to like a child star in Hollywood, like that kind of vibe. Just like uh, you, you really feel it emanating off the whole cash me outside girl camp. Mm, uh, really i can only be so specific but it feels like a pretty big fucking bummer i hope she gets out of there yeah i don't think she honestly i don't think she is because she seems pretty uh to have taken to that lifestyle pretty well you know what i mean like i think that right the bummer about her is that she's like such a attention deprived child that this must right. feel like heaven you know what i mean like this is yeah and it's like to be like okay here's half a million dollars and some free nails behave poorly yeah uh, <laughs> doesn't really is not a great way to help somebody not be a fuck up 100 dude yeah that, i think that's a really good observation on her is that she looks like uh everything that you could uh hope is not happening to a kid in hollywood is happening dude it's her. a big moment for feminism because 10 years from now we're gonna have the first female cory felt <laughs> <laughs> that's big she's like yeah dr phil didn't molest me um yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh let's jump into the clip i don't even know i don't even think this episode has aired yet really? dr phil's doing that fucking thing that he they were doing last year where they're just posting them all on youtube because he I, oh, guess I thought he, you guys had like hacked the system <laughs> you had access to yeah. like the dark files dude if i knew how to get in the cbs's archive i would not be doing a fucking podcast i'd be working for anonymous <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> getting into a fappening situation well, yeah. look, if you want to be anonymous host a dr phil podcast. <laughs> that's a pretty good way to make sure nobody ever figures out who you are that's true um all right so this episode yeah. is fucking i for, i don't even know what it's called but um i guess i could look it up sorry this is unprofessional dr phil gang mom i guess is what i'll search yeah, gang mom. You gang already gang just mom. that yeah. is incredible. That's also uh, my Pornhub search. <laughs> <laughs> gang mom. Okay, here it is. Uh, <laughs> former suburban housewife to wannabe gang member detective. 
Uh, wait, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keith, okay, we're getting deep, dude. <laughs> She's this, like uh, Crip Batman. What the fuck is happening here? I, don't, I really this. I purposely like tried to avoid watching too much of the clips because I'm like. This I feel like this is just gonna go off the fucking rails, and yeah, I, I want to be as surprised as everyone else. All right, yeah. uh, let me share the screen real fast, and then Keith, if you you can chime in at any time, just throw a hand up, and we'll try to try to pause it for you. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, and I'm seeing what you're uh, showing me here. Yeah, yeah. All right, sorry. This is all fucking weird technology. All right, let's watch the first clip. My mom has a gangster persona that's completely taken over her life, says young woman. <laughs> my mom has a gangster persona that's completely taken over her life my that's like in a movie where they say the the name of the movie right away yeah. <laughs> they just they're like just yeah. whatever she says first put that as the name of the video <laughs> yeah this is the snakes on a plane of, <laughs> yeah. of, like, trash bullshit. Yeah. Huh? my mom thinks my sister's disappearance has something to do with gang members i would trust a gang member before i trust a police officer here at the time of Jesse's oh, I think we know who shot those two cops in Compton people. this morning. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think we got our lead suspect. All I know is this girl's perm means she's definitely a fucking narc. I'm on <laughs> yeah. the mom's side so far. 100%. Dude, the mom says I would trust a gang member before a cop. What a weird Dude, fucking Dude, that lady, yeah, I, I would agree with her 10,000% <laughs> yeah. so far. I wasn't supposed to see. The police haven't found Jesse's. My sister's case is still open and it hasn't been solved. About a month after Jesse went missing, a video came out of her at a park. She kind of looked pretty scared when I went over to the event. Her head is shaved, the letters SIC, and on the other side is 13 lines going to. This is kind of confusing because the only two people who film stuff at parks are gang members and tweakers. Yeah. So it's impossible right. to say what's really going on here so far. And they both have this haircut. <laughs> yes. Yeah, she's got like a bald pat, like it she looks like a rookie football player who's getting hazed. Like they just she, shaved she looks random like a special needs her. kids Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> down the side of her head. My mom believed that the letters could be gang related. Initially, my mom started hanging out with gang members to try to get information about Jesse's disappearance. She says she gives these people a little bit of information so that she can gain their trust. I think it's liking- I just, uh, I just imagine her walking up to like gang members like Borak, <laughs> like, how's it going? Bang, bang, skeet, skeet. <laughs> 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 I am here for do crip thing. <laughs> <laughs> the camaraderie and the people she's meeting because she's like, you got my back, I got your back. It's like, it's insane. My mom went from a suburban mom to a gangster. My mom always has guns and knives on her. She Dude, holy shit, she's packing all oh the God. time. <laughs> Dude, she looks she looks like she's gonna ask to murder the manager. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thigh high leather boots on where she keeps knives in her boots. She always has a gun tucked in the back of her pants. She's always just locked and loaded. Okay, the <laughs> she's wrapping up her hands. <laughs> What is she a fight okay, character from Street Fighter? Dude, what the <laughs> fuck? She's got a chain wallet too, yeah. which might be the most offensive part so far. Yeah. I love I love how she's just like, yeah, I have a gun, I have a knife, but also I don't want to scrape up my knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> I'd really hate to break my hand in yeah. an altercation. <laughs> Gotta make sure that wrist is tight. <laughs> one thing one thing is for sure so far is this daughter is a fucking narc. She's given she's like she's always yes. carrying a gun. She's yeah, like <laughs> totally. here's where she lives if the police want to confiscate any of her <laughs> paraphernalia. Not only does it look cool, it works well. So if you brought it up, you just drop it and you have instant weapon yo <laughs> if you ever want to hit someone in the thigh with something, <laughs> because of two feet. she just had a padlock on a chain yeah. in her pocket okay yeah, she used that to shake down the pier one imports for my <laughs> yeah. She's like, yeah. um all right so before we get into this any further this this still is not inspiring it looks like she's about to do an outdoor comedy set it's I a, really it, want her to rap. I feel like that's a joke. <laughs> oh, she's in a freestyle battle right now? It's coming, yeah. <laughs> my mom and it's I don't even recognize her anymore. My mom spends a lot of time posting on Facebook, pretty much. Okay, so she's still that white lady? She's like, <laughs> yeah. I spend most of my, when I'm not in, in gang life, I'm posting on Facebook. Yeah. She's, she's posting memes of gangbanger minions. <laughs> yeah. That's what she's doing. Yeah. She's in some neighborhood watch group. Like, I just caught a body on the, the eighth block of... 
Yeah, it, it's weird. She looks kind of like Rachel Dolezal. She never pretended to be black. <laughs> yeah, the daughter. <laughs> yeah. Threatening people. She says things like, don't mess with me. I have absolutely no problem laying my... Oh, what a gangster thing to say. <laughs> don't mess, <laughs> don't with, mess me. with me. Whoa, okay, so she's really in it. She knows all the lingo. ...on the table for all to see. I don't play games. I knew things were getting bad when I was at my mother's house and there was a knock on the door and she drew her gun and had it lowered. And there was a FedEx package on her doorstep <laughs> and she said- She's like, oh, thank God. It's just another gun I ordered. <laughs> said, she shoots the box open. Embarrassing <laughs> <laughs> when you have to take your gun out for a knock at your door. I thought that was absolutely bananas. My mom has told me she thinks she's being followed. My mom has convinced herself that the police are against her, that she could be being followed by the cartel or... What just a fucking perfect white lady thing to do is just make some decisions that victimize yourself against minorities. Yeah, <laughs> she's like, 100%. She's like, now I have to be afraid that Mexicans are coming after me. It's like, you don't have to. You did, you've done this to yourself. <laughs> All I know is this is the hardest a white person has ever worked to be allowed to say the end. That's really what I think the end game of all this is. I hope she does drop it once, just for good what, measure. What I also love about this video is that, like, the more they're detailing her descent into madness, the more bracelets and shit she's wearing. <laughs> yeah. But she's gaining a new accessory for yeah. every day she's going to have to send to the mental hospital. She's like, my outfit inspiration is Ice Cube and Johnny Depp. I, I like accessories. Yeah. I'd like to look like Miley Cyrus beyond Thunderdome. <laughs> Our gang members. Jesse's case is my mom's whole life, and I asked my mom if she could walk away, and she said, I'll never walk away until I have answers. Well, Brittany, it's, it's good to meet you, and I'm very sorry what's going on with your sister, Thank Jesse. You. you believe that she's probably deceased. Yes, sir. I'm really sorry about that, if in fact that's the case. I, I hate that for your family. How have you accommodated to that? Have you accepted that that's the reality? Have you grieved your sister? You know, also, are you going to smoke one of them now? <laughs> because it's more out yeah. there. So. I understand if they put one of yours in the hospital, <laughs> yeah. you put two of theirs in the morgue. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> this poor girl, she's like, I mean, Dr. Phil, we can talk about my dead sister, but I don't know if I, you saw my mom has a lock on her fucking body at all times, so she can assault somebody. So like, maybe we should focus on that. Yeah. Look, I appreciate you being here, young blood. Uh, yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> If there's one thing gangs like, it's airing out their business on national. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For the first two years, I think we had a lot of faith and a lot of hope that something would turn up. And it seemed that at the two-year mark is when I really wanted to heal. And I thought it, I owed it to myself and to my sister to try to move on with my life um, and accept that she could have been murdered and the alternates seem, um, you don't want your mind to go to those places. There's 12 steps to grieving. But God, how do you have such a crazy story and such a boring voice? Yeah. 100%. Throw some fucking tone, lady. <laughs> <laughs> There's not 12 steps to having a missing loved one. It would be easier if you knew. Even if it was bad news, it would be easier if you knew. Exactly. And when other people who have missing loved ones in their life find out that find their loved one or find out that they have, you know, were found deceased. Um, you know, it's crazy because actually my wife Robin is going to be missing next week. And <laughs> <laughs> I can't well, relate. <laughs> <laughs> we've got a surprise for you, Brittany. We've got what's left of your sister. Come on out. <laughs> They Here's bring the out just a wheelbarrow <laughs> with some of a chick in it. It's Dr. Phil just doing the worst Ellen impression. <laughs> we found some of her remains. dancing over a dead body. <laughs> you almost feel envious that they're able to go from there and i wish with my entire heart we had answers sure all right yeah good good clip <laughs> i love dr phil's editing team it's yeah, just like just keep the most so boring part mad. at the end yeah yeah nobody made it that far <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh all right woman says she infiltrated gangs to get answers on her daughter's disappearance now we get to hear from the mom i oh, investigate sick. my missing daughter's case full time when i go out and look for answers for my daughter i need protection with me so i always carry three firearms the strap keeps it from falling out and i always just keep it in my belt it is dangerous out on the streets oh she's wearing blue okay so she's 
Wow. She's either false claiming or drawing a line in the sand. <laughs> And you do need to pay attention to what you're doing and what you have going on. I do feel different when I dress like this because it's like my job. She's not dressed <laughs> like a gangster. <laughs> yeah. she's, she's dressed like a grandma on a roller derby. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's she's not tough. She's dressed like an old lady who can only afford the sales rack at Kohl's. <laughs> yeah. No, she looks like a schizophrenic Ruby the Riveter. <laughs> 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 It's almost like walking into a different life. I usually carry about six knives. So I just kind of tuck this into there. Carried one in my boot because if I need to reach one, I want to make sure one's available to me however I need to reach it. It's really good to wrap your hands. I do wear boxing wraps. One time I did have to use them. Somebody came up behind me and like picked me up and I did swing at them. So I wear spikes in my hair for protection. So if I needed to use them. Whoa, what? That is the coolest way to appropriate Japanese culture though. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That fucking rules. That's a Mortal Kombat <laughs> That's move. fucking crazy That's right there. That's pretty badass. Yeah. I would just pull them out. And if you're going to use them, you turn them backwards like this. I was meeting with gang members a couple times a week to get information about Jesse's case and then become more of like a... All right, I'll be the one who asks. Do you think she got plowed out by any of these gang members? I feel One like... One million percent, yes. Good I feel like she's got to be sucking someone's dick to let gangs just let her in to their knowledge. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, and I, and I don't think that's even... I think she's doing that because it seems fun. It has nothing to do with the murder <laughs> it's investigation. It's the danger. <laughs> yeah, she's she can like, keep her work and her uh, personal life separate. She's, she's just yeah. loves having a knife to her no, throat. totally. I feel like... <laughs> I feel no, like she's holding the knife to their throat. They <laughs> want to feel in danger. Yeah, or the chopstick, whatever is in her hair. <laughs> I, I feel like even if like a detective called her and was like, I'm so sorry, but your daughter's dead, she'd be like, No, but I love the streets. And then just <laughs> hang up. I, well, I made a decision for the rest of my life. <laughs> family a lot of the gang members call me mache the gang members have definitely given me more information about my daughter than the police have they have told oh, they're, they're just making all kinds of shit up just yeah. to fuck with this lady there's no way they've given uh -huh. her any information yeah or or alternatively and i don't know the story of the daughter they killed her uh, and <laughs> yeah. they're like well, let's tell her it's a conspiracy or whatever yeah that those are the two wow. options they're either lying to her or lying to her yeah <laughs> right that's the only reason <laughs> Told me locations to go and search. Others had given me information about the weapons that were used. This is the last place that Jesse was seen at that could be verified. There is a video that was taken of the day Jesse went missing. She had on clothes that did not belong to her, and her behavior was just very bizarre. All right, so in the video, she's smoking something. Yeah. You hope it's weed, but it it probably isn't. Um, yeah. I, usually, when you have your head shaved like that, you're not smoking weed. So we were very concerned about that because everything was just out of character. Jesse had a lot of friends that were in different gangs. I believe that the police botched Jesse's case because they haven't been able to recover her body. Somebody did something to her. That somebody is still walking our streets. Our streets. <laughs> yeah, ours. <laughs> Me and the f the fellas streets. <laughs> and we won't stop. I didn't know MS-13 could get gentrified. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Sherry, I'm, I'm glad you're here, and uh, I'm sorry this has happened to your family. I'm sorry that there's all of this question about your daughter. We don't know what's happened to her. Uh, it certainly occurs to you as time passes that she very well may be gone, correct? That is correct. You say you believe the local police know what happened to Jesse, but just are not telling you. I do believe that they've been given a lot of evidence and that evidence is I'm told is not even available anymore. And I don't know where it went or why it went somewhere else, mm -hmm. but it's not there. And so it's those constant asking of questions and trying to look for the information that you know they have because you provided it to them. Right. Now, you know that cops help white people, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they typically don't try to fuck with white people. Yeah. Yeah, they're he they don't lie to you. They lie to your friends. Yeah. Yeah. And you say one of the things that you think they have that you've not seen, but that you believe they have, is an actual video of her being killed. That is correct. I've been told many, many times about a video. They told me they received a video, but they only showed me about a four second part of it and told me the rest mm -hmm. wouldn't play. But the next time I went to go visit them, they said they had been to the location where the video was shot. 
So they told me you couldn't see anything at all. But then coming back and saying that again, it was like, okay, well, how did you see that location? How did you go there? So there's way more to that video than what they told me originally. All right. So that adds a wrinkle to this. There's a video of her daughter being murdered. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I'm very confused. Yeah. Yeah. What I think is that that's not a real thing. And she's sort of combining half truths and weird mental breakdown logic and kind of making that up. I agree. It feels like she's grasping onto any bit of sanity. And, you know, I, I, my feelings, they've, the gang members probably told her there's a video of it. And so she right. told the cops there's a video of it. And they're like, oh, yeah, we got that video. And then they're like, she'll leave. You know, yeah. <laughs> you tell her we got it. Yes. She'll get out of here. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's the end of that clip. Let's watch the next one here. Um, oops. Something tells me they're not going to solve the murder by the end of this podcast. That's my guess. Um, Keith, I'll even spoil it for you a little bit more. We don't even get a resolution to the episode in the clips. Dr. Phil's production team just is like, here's the last thing interesting she said. We don't care what happens at the end. (laughs) Even if they at the end had a confession, we wouldn't know because they didn't put it on YouTube. Um, Hold on. Let me make sure. You say you believe the local police. All right. Here we go. Know what. Sorry. Fucking Zoom is. This is tough technology. Here we go. A uh, woman claims local police are corrupt and botched investigation into her daughter's disappearance. Happened to Jesse, but just are not telling you. I do believe that. They've been given a lot of evidence, and that evidence is, I'm told, is not even available anymore. And I don't know where it went or why. Wait, it went. I'm sorry. Are you confusing your daughter with Fred Hampton? Is that what's <laughs> going on? <laughs> <laughs> they look pretty similar. I mean, <laughs> easy misunderstanding. <laughs> somewhere else but it's not there and so it's this constant asking of questions and trying to look for the information that you know they have because you provided it to them right and you say one of the things that you think they have that you've not seen but that you believe they have is an actual video of her being killed that is correct i've been told many many times about it oh dude dr phil did this shit where he Oh, God, I hate his production team so much. This is just the same clip we saw with more added on, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, let's see. Oh, uh, that's fucking lame. Dude, his production team's so awful. They received a video, but they yeah. only showed me about a four-second part of it. And- yeah, see, this is the same shit we just saw. Yeah, that sucks when you wanted to see a whole video, but you only get a short clip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can all relate now. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, we're victims as much as Sherry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's this is inspiring me to go join a gang. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of money in the valley. Um, we have things all the time happen. We just had a drug bust last year. Thirty thousand dollars went missing, and half the drugs went missing. That happens. We don't know why. So you think that it may be that they're involved with some of the higher ups in the in the criminal combine that could be involved in her death. That is my belief. Yes, okay. it is. Um, and we, we spoke to a captain in the Wenatchee Police Department who said the following, uh, quote, we absolutely... Bitch, are- you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's how you know she's full. Like, she believes there's a conspiracy where, like, the police are tied in with the gang leaders. Yeah. Uh, if that's true, they're not letting her be alive to go on Dr. Phil. 100%. Yeah, very true. 1,000%. Yeah, she'd be murdered at the same bus stop. Like, yes. That's exactly what happened. And she's, like, giving out her gang name. She's like, they call me Mache. It's like, okay, well, there went any hope of you ever really being in the gang because you've completely yeah. compromised yeah. your identity now. <laughs> like, <laughs> Not in possession of a videotape of Jesse's alleged murder. He said, straight up, we don't have a videotape of her murder. Um, and we've talked to him. And This lady's lying? No way. Yeah. Color me surprised. <laughs> Dude, when you were a kid, did you ever like watch? I don't, how old are you, Keith? Uh, 31. 31. Yeah, it's probably in your wheelhouse, too. Like, did you ever watch like a like a Jackie Chan movie and then just start trying to do karate? Yes. This is <laughs> this is this lady in Taken where she's like, OK, I guess I just got to I got to solve my kids missing case at any yeah. cost. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a special set of, ki- of skills, but I do have special needs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Liam Neeson in Karen. <laughs> 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 
He said, they, they've never had it, don't have it now. And they gave us a statement, and I'll share it with you so then you can respond to it. And I'm not saying you agree with any of this. I'm just telling you what they say. Okay. This letter is to provide a status of the investigation into the missing person case intentionally reported to the Wenatchee Police Department on June 29th, 2016. While this case gets older every day, it is still an open case. Jesse's disappearance is assigned to our Crimes Against Person detective who is routinely reviewing the case file. Additionally, this detective is still investigating tips and leads that come in to the Wenatchee Police Department. Missing person cases can be very challenging, and this case is one of the longest running in recent department history. If Netflix ever stops producing softcore child porn, I'd love to see a documentary on this lady. <laughs> <laughs> like if, if, if they also, ever... can we acknowledge the weird banner that just flew across yeah. and recorded before stay at yeah. home order? I think they've done it a couple of times. Just be like, okay, Dr. Phil would be yeah. the one person who gets in trouble for not wearing a mask. People so. still yeah. are right. Don't fucking in. snitch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like all missing person cases, we have followed protocols that are internal to our department and also external requirements levied by the Washington State Patrol and other state agencies. Jesse is entered into federal, state, and local databases as a missing person. We have worked closely with Jesse's family throughout this case and still periodically meet with her mother regarding the status of the case and the investigation. We are still seeking information about Jesse's disappearance we would love to get new leads from people who may have information but have not yet talked to us. Somebody out there has pieces of information that may lead us to solving this case. What's your response to their statement? One. Fucking pigs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, first of all, ACAP, Phil. <laughs> Let me start off by saying fuck 12. <laughs> yeah. Is... I don't even know where to start with that. They haven't talked to me in over a year until recently. I met with them oh, last why? week. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> why? Yeah, she just like tries to save face. So she's all, and I wouldn't talk to them even yeah. if they approached me. Let me make that very clear. She's just like a lonely grandma. Like, I wish they would phone yeah. more. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote them a letter telling them oh. they're fucks. <laughs> oh, I wish you guys would talk to me more about my, my dead tweaker daughter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> When I talked to your producers, miraculously, they showed up two hours later at my door wanting a meeting. Uh -huh. And I hadn't even told them anything at all. The other thing is, is that they are the ones that have information. They do know who is responsible for this, at least partially so. One of the men is in prison right now. And... So what the fuck what? are you fighting about? One of the yeah, yeah, what? And then you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're like, we need someone to tell us who did it. And she's like, they know, and I know. <laughs> it's like, what, what is going also, on? Also, you can't get a guy killed inside. You're not really in the game. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. That's the <laughs> easiest. Like if the Bloods want to kill a guy who's in prison, they'll kill a guy who's in prison. Yeah, it's the easiest hit to get. You know exactly where he's at. Yeah. They allow him to work for them. And that is where the issue comes in because they don't want to give up their confidential informants. And there are there is evidence in this case that hasn't been followed. Okay. Great editing again. Uh, yeah, just end <laughs> mid sentence yeah. there. Um, um, Keith, do you have do you have a hard out or anything? No, no, I'm okay. around. Cool, cool, okay. sweet. All right, we got two more clips here. Um, I think <clears> yeah, this, let's do it. I think this next one's going to be fun. A uh, woman claims missing daughter was tortured for the drug adrenochrome. Jesus. Okay, that, that's how you know that we're broken as like comedians. <laughs> but you read that and you're like, oh, this is going to be hilarious. Yeah, dude. I'm like, this is sweet because so, this is a drug I'm yeah. not familiar with. If this was she got killed for some crack, I'd be like, eh, boring. This is yesterday's Yeah, I also love that Dr. Phil can barely contain his glee with like, I found a grave worth robbing. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hmm, what, a fucking, what a weird vampire <laughs> yeah. like, he is. Hmm, yeah, a missing person is. I could exploit. Yeah, let's get her on here. Uh, all right, let's watch the clip here. My mom has a lot of theories on what happened to Jesse, and it seems like every... Oh, fucking Zoom. Every time I talk to her, there's a new theory. There's someone else involved. My mom's theories are she thinks a cult kidnaps people every full moon to. 
All right. Every fall moon. So at least, yes! we, at least we know she is white with all these fucking dumb conspiracy theories. Uh, that is Yo, great. this shit just got pumpkin spice. We yeah. brought fall into it. Yeah, so after doing some research, I decided it's either a gang because of drugs or a cult that kidnaps people every full moon. Yeah. So widespread, <laughs> widespread of stuff here. Look, crips are actually werewolves. And <laughs> let me tell you. Yeah. Yeah. This is the, the inspiration for the Twilight movies, <laughs> the gang life. <laughs> <laughs> Sacrifice them. My investigation has revealed that this is all linked to a ritual. I believe somebody in an occult was drugging my daughter Jessie for a year before she went missing. I believe that she was killed June 20th, 2016 because it was a full moon. Oh and- my God. <laughs> I was like, man, that's very uh, specific. She must know something. Yeah. I, I just imagine a gang member like, God, I want to murder white bitches, but it's not a full moon. So we can't. <laughs> it's against our code. Yeah. <laughs> she hasn't even been drugged yet. Yeah. <laughs> just at the same time. And then the next day was Lilith. Lilith is a holiday that the occult does celebrate. And oh, God. And <laughs> sacrifice. I had a person. Man, what a fucking left turn we took. Yeah. This yeah, went from this, like feet. This like, went zero to cuckoo bananas. Yeah, this very went quickly. plausible to holy shit. She should be in in a mental institution. Be cool. Yeah. yeah. Right. Say to me that if I looked around at the environment and looked at the seasons, I would see a pattern. And as I oh, looked no. and did more research, realized that it was very specific, and that people went missing on very specific days throughout the whole year. My mom thinks everything's connected to other missing persons cases. Like it's a big web. A lot of the times she'll say things like, I know I sound crazy, but it just started getting too out of control. I believe she's all as as in addition to going undercover with the gangs, I've also joined 4chan. And so <laughs> <laughs> can we acknowledge that her daughter doesn't not look like Woody Harrelson? A little bit? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not saying it's good that she got murdered, but I'm saying that photo makes me feel less bad than the other one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, she actually does look like a cop that could have murdered her. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she looks like she should be playing harmonica on like an old timey uh, like chain gang. Yeah. <laughs> that Jesse was tortured for the drug adrenochrome. Adrenochrome is a chemical that our body produces when we are extremely fearful or have a lot of distress. It gives you strength. It gives you vitality. And the people... This sounds like something Joe Rogan peddles. Yeah, totally. <laughs> do, you, do you know... Do you guys know about this adrenochrome shit? No, is it a real Never, thing? Have you heard This of is it? like all QAnon, uh, oh. like right-wing conspiracy oh. shit. This is what this is what they think the Clintons are doing, like the crazy like uh, right wing conspiracy people. Oh, okay. Well, then this makes this a is lot all more pizza sense. gate shit is what she's gone down. And I don't know how to put this, but I don't think this kid was abduct- abducted for pizza gate because those kids were like cute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at, yes, at least. Like yeah. it's mean, but if we're really going down this road, let's go down this road. Yeah, either cute yeah. or parents who would never join a gang to find answers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, neglective parents. Yeah. People that killed Jesse are harvesting that from other people. And when you drink it, it gives you euphoria and power. My gang member told me later that he had a video of her death. He told me that Jesse had been killed, that her body had been put into a barrel and set on fire. The police do have a part of that video. And Donkey Kong threw it. At- <laughs> <laughs> yes. the and then people that had the same haircut as her stood around it and got got warmth from it. That <laughs> <laughs> the police are protecting her killer. Okay, so let me see if I understand this right. You believe that there, there is a cult in the area, and that because of the date and time, and the seasons and the full moon, that whether that has any significance to anybody else or not, it does to this group. That is correct. I have talked to people that were there when Jesse was murdered, that said that there is that video, and that that's the reason that they did do it. And okay. you say you've talked to people that were there. Correct. And have you? turn those names over to the police? I have not, because I just recently got those names. Okay, so she, now she's admitting she's going to snitch? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what a fucking you, moron. You know, if you believe there's like a, like a crazy cult full of like elites who are conspiring to eat children, you know who you shouldn't talk to? Oprah's friend. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah that... He's calling Oprah right after this, like, this bitch knows. <laughs> she's like, look at the flight logs. My daughter was on Epstein's Island. 
<laughs> dude, what's it like really dumb though? She's like, no, I haven't given them yet, but I'm going to. And it's like, wait, aren't these the same? You're like, aren't these the people who killed your daughter or yeah. had a hand in it? She's like, like the police yeah, are really stop dragging. stop on Dr. Phil on the way to get justice? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the police are really dragging their feet on this case. So I, I'm just going to do it after the weekend. I had a hard <laughs> week at work. <laughs> do it Tuesday, make it a three day. Yeah. I don't so is it gang members or is it a cult? It's a cult. But then you were saying that it's gang members as well. There's some people from every walk of life in there. One thing. <laughs> wow. Dude, the gang members so that have ascended to a powerful cult is awesome. That's a real rags to riches story. <laughs> this theory, I haven't even heard this one before. This is the same theory. Well, it's like. <laughs> it is certainly not the same theory. <laughs> no. <laughs> so like you always have a different one. That's because you don't come and talk to me at home. There's a video of Jessica. Wow, dude, what a great why. mom. She's still able to guilt her living daughter. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you called me more, I wouldn't be trying to fight the devil. <laughs> She's like, you know what? The wrong daughter was abducted by a cult and also gang members for a drug. <laughs> Jesse's death out running around over all over town. They're showing it at parties. They think it's funny. I mean, well, it's very, if, I've had you so infiltrated people. this, why, why has everybody seen it but you? Not everybody's seen it. It's very selective. It's selectable. all over town. It's yes, been shown at parties. they are showing it at parties. So. But yet you haven't seen it? No, I have not seen it myself. Now, the police captain also told us that we have never had a case involving the drug ad adrenochrome. We've never even heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> the, imagine the police chief having to fucking type this email. Like, no, I don't. I don't know what the fuck this is. Yeah, it's well, adrenochrome is like it's like a made up. Th it's yeah. a real like thing that your body produces, but you can just buy it. Like, it's not you don't have to kill somebody to get it. Oh, it just okay. exists. It is doesn't this, get you high. Is this the thing that like the QAnon people, which is crazy because I'm pretty into that shit, or at least not like you know I don't believe it, but I, I'm. Up on it. Right. This is the You're shit. Going that to they, the rallies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, look, I'm a three percenter. I'm not a fucking QAnon guy. Though, okay, <laughs> have some self respect. Uh, this is the drug that they think you you get adrenochrome from, like eating kids, right? <laughs> Yeah, they think you have to, like, scare a kid and then eat them, and then you, uh, <laughs> yes. I, I don't know, are, are, like, super high. Yeah. Maybe they just I, I watch really Monsters, understand. Inc. on DMT yeah. or something. It's exactly <laughs> Monsters, Inc. Wait, so they scare a kid. Like, do they just say, I'm going to eat you? Like, how far <laughs> yeah. they just... They scare a kid <laughs> yeah, by, like, like taking the them like, away from hurt, their they like, they, like, torture the kid, and then when the kid's like, oh, that sucks, then they're... Then their they, adrenochrome is juicy. I don't really yeah. know. Yeah, this sounds kind of like Death Eaters. I did, like, there's some yeah. plagiarism going on. I didn't. I didn't know what the name of the drug was, but I heard that it's like that kids produce produce it the most, and it like runs. That's total bullshit. Yeah, they, it runs uh, through like, the heart. Or this is something. the same drug, and like it's in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. It's in a Clockwork Orange. It's like oh. a fictional, like made up, like drug that's got been it. around in literature for like a hundred years. Got it. Got yeah, it, got it. I feel like the cops are like, "Huh, adrenochrome? No, I don't remember planting that on anyone." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> crack works the fine. Bot, the chief's like, "Hey, you guys ever heard of adrenochrome?" It's like, "Yeah, was it on a was it on a man I shot in the back?" And he's like, <laughs> "No." He's like, oh, "Okay, then." No, I've never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, what's going on here? Until Dr. Phil producers brought it to our attention. Now, the gang presence in Wenatchee is currently active, but a very low boil. And they say there is no cult presence in Wenatchee area whatsoever. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's so anticlimactic. There's basically. one clip left. I, I think it actually comes earlier in the episode, but I left it out just because it seems almost too bizarre to play. It's woman who accompanied friend to body dump site says she fears her friend is uh, going to get harmed. I, do yeah, you guys, watch that right now. Do you want to watch that? Because I was like, I don't yeah. know if this even sounds yeah. interesting. But... It sounds very interesting. <laughs> okay, let's check what it out. What the fuck are you talking <laughs> about? Dude, you know, whenever they go like offset, the clips usually suck is what I noticed. Because okay. then you just introduce a peripheral yeah. character who like, then we have to acknowledge it sucks. But let's yeah, check it, this out. It's also weird because Dr. Phil will like whisper as if like Robin's in the other room on a business call. Like, <laughs> yeah. he's just like, so uh, I'm here. And uh, yeah. like, it's weird. Oh, no, this this is not this is there's no COVID in this. This is like still all studio. But they're like they're in the middle of a fucking like marsh. Watch this. 
Sherry has been like a daughter to me. I, Is that Elizabeth Warren? <laughs> <laughs> that Sherry. looks like a lesbian hedgehog. What is going on here? <laughs> Dude, her voice sounds just like Elizabeth Warren. Holy shit. Almost Dude, her neck sad. looks like a wise tree. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. She does look like a hedgehog. She looks like a Sonic if he liked onion rings. <laughs> <laughs> to my stomach when I go to visit because all she talks about is how she's got new evidence. She believes that she knows who has killed her daughter. As time has gone on, she wants retaliation. There was a time when Sherry came to my home. She asked me if a friend of hers could come and use the bathroom. It happened to be one of the, a gang member that she was with and told Sherry. Dude, <laughs> dude, that's so great. Do you, do you mind if my friend P-Dog takes a shit your <laughs> Yeah, he said the block is hot. I'm still learning the lingo, so I don't know what that means. But he said he's gonna crash here a couple nights. Is that all right? Yeah, he says we're going to get something called chicken and waffles. Come, it's gonna be great. He's all, hey, I like your granite countertops. Can I take a piss? She's like, who is this guy? She's like, hey, can you not? Yo, this is like a tasteful breakfast nook and shit. Is this all the original hardwood, or did you guys put this in? He's just like, can yo, you can I sit on this wicker chair? Is that motherfucking decorative? <laughs> uh, she's like, hey, if it's all right, can you please stop pouring your 40 on my linoleum? I'd really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I really don't want you to be bringing gang members to my home. Now they know where I live. Yeah, he's like, damn, you got hella jewelry in here. <laughs> She's like, oh, Jesus See, my, Christ. I, I will say this. I don't think that anybody has engaged with an actual gang member in True. all this. Totally. I think they have both met one black guy. Yeah, totally. And they're making a lot of assumptions. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I kind of agree. Even one if they are, guy. they're like gangs that like, in the same way that like you got gangs at your high school, but it was just like six friends who hung out with each other. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, and they're like, just friends. Yeah, and they would like fight people. You know what I mean? Like that was all right. the gang was. That's what this feels like for sure because there's I, I agree with you keith like there's no way a gang actually lets this lady in this deep yeah what no no competent gang is speaking to her yeah no. yeah every people might talk to her for like like i've i said if she's throwing like ass <laughs> to him or if she's like she's like i'll give you a thousand dollars to tell me everything you know but yeah there's no way well, there I, yeah if you joined a gang to get pussy this is not the pussy you joined <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I just hope that she's on like a new episode of gangland like you just see her silhouette yeah. <laughs> last year sherry was trying to get someone to take her to what she called a body dump site that one of the gang affiliates had told her about and they sent her pictures and it looked like a garbage bag, and it looked like human bones inside the bag. She had to see this sight. I was scared. We didn't know what to expect or what we were going to find. We're so scared. I wonder that if this is like a, like the male version of like a sugar daddy situation. He's like, I really don't want to talk to this lady, but she pays my bills. <laughs> so yeah. I'm going to give her a call. Yeah. Well, it's also like, why are they all dumping bodies at the same place? Just so yeah. they can all get caught yeah. together? Like, yeah. You just run into your friend. You're like, ah, big little. <laughs> you're dropping a body too. <laughs> I don't, nowhere is better to hide a body than in plain sight in the middle of a park. Yeah. <laughs> that we both carried pistols. We didn't see any human remains at all. But Sherry was convinced that that site has something to do with dead people. She's looking for answers. She's willing to manipulate anything. I'm surprised she didn't just go to a graveyard. <laughs> yeah. This is where the bodies are. It's got to be in here somewhere. It's we're gonna, the perfect place. We're going to we're gonna dig until we find it. <laughs> to get in the door, my fear is she's not going to find answers. She's going to get harmed. Lindy, you've known Sherry how long? Close to 20 years. 20 years. I'm concerned with what she's doing for two reasons. One is, I think... I think she's false claiming, and I think that's a, <laughs> that's a reason she's going to get jumped eventually. Well, who'd you Barb, if you're yeah. going to rep these streets, you got to <laughs> yeah. fucking bleed for these streets. Yeah, what set is she repping? Do you even know? She's putting herself in harm's <laughs> way, and second, that she's doing this instead of grieving. Absolutely, Dr. Phil. Do you share 
her concern, Brittany's concern about what you're doing going out. I mean, you're going out with three guns and six knives on you. First off, why are why are you doing that? Because I'm going to make sure that I'm protected. I can't count on the police to protect me. But do you understand how worried we are for you? No, and I know you're I thinking know, we're. She's like, no, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> you should. You should stop worrying. I understand worrying. very little. <laughs> yes, it's going to be better for your mental health if you stop worrying about me because it's only going to get worse. <laughs> this, this trailer home doesn't call nine one one. No, I don't because you guys, instead of trying to decrease my stress, you guys increase it, which By is not help helpful. You, Mom? If I try to take Jace away from you, you guys call CPS on me. You I never called CPS. This oh. Oh. Yeah. oh, God. Uh, always a, a dark, dark twist. wrinkle emerges. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I never called CPS because they don't care about dead kids. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's kind of out of their hands at that point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I think that in the the trailer for the episode, like every Keith, every episode has like a thirty second clip that like okay. teases it. And in the teaser, they said that she, I don't know whose kid it is, but she has custody of like an eight year old kid. Gotcha, gotcha. Which yeah, yeah. trying which, to get that handled. Which Yikes. is going to be like the weirdest uh, remake of the Blind Side ever. She's like. <laughs> I took in a gang member kid and made him a gang member kid. <laughs> I switched his do gangs. Think, do we think this lady killed her daughter? Wow. You're introducing an interesting theory here. Yeah. I, I hadn't thought about it until the CPS thing. And now I'm like, maybe this is, we're on some Casey Anthony shit. She definitely is inventing this whole convoluted trail to throw it off from like, whoopsie daisies. I drowned a bitch. Like, <laughs> Yeah. I could I could see that. I think what might be more likely is she was a shit mom yeah. whose then uh. kid got into like hang, hanging out with bad people and now she feels right. like this like weird pressure to like right the wrongs. You know what I mean? Like right. that seems like but I mean killing her would be awesome if she was like, Yeah, this is the body dump site and they're like, How do you know? And she's like, Well, I mean, I, I found a I video know. and they're like, Where'd you find the video? She's like, My iCloud. <laughs> 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 need to even go there because jace you want to my nephew you? in one week he was sent home three times that's nothing to do with you or nothing to do with the case no. okay Remember? you're being very smug about that i am but you i'm know, upset because well, you know okay what? but i'm upset this. too this young man got a gun and fired it off in the backyard oh the fucking eight-year-old kid holy shit yo that's awesome dude that's just american this kid sounds great yeah, yeah. I want that kid to be armed because he lives in the house with this. <laughs> yeah, that's, <right>. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. It wasn't a real gun. And yes, he's like, he's, it, she's just like, no, it was safe. He had his hand wraps on. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the most disgusting part is he didn't even have a bike chain in his yeah. pocket. Like, he didn't have chopsticks in his hair. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I did reprimand him yeah. for that. I said, if you're gonna if you're gonna have a gun, you better have three knives minimum. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I think she just claimed it wasn't a real gun. I want to hear this explanation. It off in the backyard. It wasn't a real gun. And yes, it was. I've no, never I, heard of you having a BB gun. Really? Because it was in my car for a really long time. And what do they do? And they know that I'm talking to the, and then the police call me. So, I yeah, kid can't hurt itself with a BB gun. Yeah, so I think yeah. she should be exonerated on all charges here. Well, I think she's like, it wasn't a real gun. It was a nine millimeter. Those are for chicks <laughs> and gays. She's like, I, I, I've shot three men in the legs with a nine millimeter. I mean, that barely does damage. <laughs> I can't even come unless you shoot me with a nine millimeter. That's nothing. <laughs> I talked to your producer two hours later. The police call me. They all of a sudden want an interview. Well, then why do you decide that your phones are bugged instead of the fact that we're all of a sudden <clears throat> going on all fronts to try to find what happened to your daughter? To I'm help you and to help Jace. I said that something had to have happened because they... Well, you said, no, I'm point. being monitored. I, I believe I am. My phones are being... I'm being followed. <laughs> I am being followed. They'll tell you that. The police told me that. And you they have to stay off Facebook. <laughs> they told her to stay off Facebook. They're like, yeah, because you keep posting the N-word, ma'am, and you're, go <laughs> you're going to get fired. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we have a 40-strike policy <laughs> on Facebook. They're like, look, we'll only retweet that so many times before we <laughs> do something. <laughs> <laughs> Baby boy, and you think you're being followed. You don't see a problem with that? No, you don't Brittany, I can't control what other people do. I can only control what I do. His safety is should be <laughs> your really? number so one. Where is he going to be safer at? Where is he going to be safer? He's going to be safer with a grandmother that is not out 
hanging with gang members and coming and going strapped with guns and knives. That's my, that's my legal to, right. I have a right to carry my did. Hell yeah. Now she's really turned yeah. into a QAnon person. Totally. Yeah, she's back to Second Amendment. <laughs> what do you think the odds are that she's wearing a mask during COVID? Oh, no oh, chance, none. dude. Zero percent. Unless she could find a mask that was also a knife. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> she's probably got a shit ton of bandanas, so that probably helps her out. But <laughs> Yeah, true. It probably helps her look. It's also very, I, I want to give her a little bit of credit. It's very funny watching all these people be like you're not being realistic and the world is normal while it's flashing a reminder that there's a global plague <laughs> yeah, that's a good point yeah. it's like i don't know fucking maybe sherry's right yeah man. that's a good point actually and then like she's like doing all this QAnon stuff and they're like this is crazy and then all the galane maxwell shit happens yeah, later true. too <laughs> yeah <laughs> You have a right to do that, but you have a responsibility correct. to put this young man's interest ahead do, of your own. That's correct, and I do. So Every don't day. tell me. Good edit right there. Yeah, <laughs> oh, literally wow. mid word. Right in the middle of a line of dialogue. Literally no mid word. Holy shit, that could not be worse. Um, yeah. Like I told you guys, I don't. There's no conclusion to the episode whatsoever. Yeah, it's beautiful. Bonkers Insane. the editing. Yeah, yeah I it. It makes no goddamn sense. Yeah, I mean, we do it, minimal editing on this podcast, and we do more editing than Dr. Phil's Yeah, it, it's edited <laughs> like if the character in the movie Memento like tried to make the movie <laughs> Memento. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, all the good stuff ends up on the cutting room floor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Keith, dude, thanks so much for being on. Yeah, thank we really you. Dude, appreciate it. This is fucking fun, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah thanks. What, uh, do you, what do you got going on? Where can people find you? What, what do you want them to listen to? Yeah, uh, my podcast, uh, This Is Not A Show, uh, it, weird plug, but if you like hockey, I have a YouTube series called Serious Hockey Talk, where nice. me and Tom making fun of hockey. Uh, and then, yeah, I'm on social media, at Keith Tells Jokes. Uh, at some point, if stand-up exists, I'll post like tour dates and stuff there. Awesome, dude. And awesome. And like we said at the top, your podcast is really fucking funny, so people should Thanks, definitely man. check it out, yeah. dude. I, I, uh, I was a big fan of like Meme Boys. I listened to like all the backlogs and shit because I don't have a life. And uh, yeah, man, right. uh, it's really great having you on. Love your albums and all that, too. So Thanks, yeah. Man. Yeah, good shit. Thanks, Keith. We really appreciate all it, right. man. All right, we'll talk to later. you later. Have a good one, dude. Later, man. Well, I guess we'll wait and see where